Hello and welcome back to Feline Burger Art. In this video I'm going to be making velvet from the game Tales of Berseria. The final custom will be a birthday present for my son. I'm going to use this Reboot Clio Denial as my base. In the Reboot series the arm and knee joints are thicker and I figured she would be less likely to break than an original Monster High doll. My son is turning 8 this year, and Velvet is one of his favorite characters. I recently obtained some molds from Etsy for making inset eyes. I got a few different sizes, so I would have some options. I was really excited, so I tested them out with air dry clay and black polymer clay. I just got my UV resin before starting this project. I picked this size because I thought they would look best with the head size. I mark my guidelines on the final with a regular number 2 pencil. This can be easily erased if I make a mistake. I turn the head upside down just like when I do the face up to check for unevenness and to get a better angle for drawing the other side of the face. I double check the size of the eyes and my guidelines. In order to access the inside of the head to put the eyes in, I need to open the scalp. I try to use a smooth single slice and it's a good idea to always cut away from your hand in case you slip. Cutting the eyes was pretty awkward. Um, I couldn't get the right angle to make the cut in a single motion, and the vinyl head kept squishing, so I tried making it in a few cuts instead. I do a stroke for the top and bottom eyelids. Then I go back in and clean the rough edges up. Once I've opened her eyes, I use my craft knife and thin the vinyl on the inside so the eyes can sit closer to the surface of the face. This way there won't be as much of a gap around the inset eyes. This eye base used white air dry clay. I did a flat gold coat of paint initially, but thought the glow in the dark paint would be really cool. She could sit on my son's shelf and stare at him in the dark. Really though, they don't glow that strongly, but I did try. Velvet's irises are pretty simple anime iris without much color variation. I mix in a little black towards the tops of the eyes. Once the paint is semi-dry, I drop tiny little beads into the middle to act as pupils. I angle them so that the hole in the center is facing up. I like to add some of the iris's color to the pupil whenever I'm drawing, so I thought that the beads faked that nicely. After the irises are dry, I paint the whites of the eyes white. I did this because the clay I used isn't actually pure white. It picked up some dust and cat hair when I rolled it out before prepping it into the silicone mold. Once all the paint is dry, I drop in a small amount of UV resin. I am wearing an N95 mask while doing this, but it may not really be enough. I might need to use a full respirator next time because this stuff is stinky. I know it's putting out fumes and I should probably be wearing gloves as well. This was my first time using resin and I didn't realize just how toxic it is. All the bottles always say it's non-toxic, it's safe, but it's only actually non-toxic after it's been cured. I cure my resin with my little UV flashlight. To smooth out the eyes, I dab liquid resin all around them. I do my best not to touch this. I also work on top of parchment paper because I don't want to have to worry about cleaning up a chemical mess. Next time, I will be wearing gloves.
Once it's cured, I trim the rough edges and then pop them into her head. Painting her body was so difficult. I'm lightening her skin tone because Velvet is very pale. In hindsight, I should have just used an apple white body in combination with the Cleo head. I mean, it worked overall, but no matter what I did, the paint would not stick to the top of her upper thigh. You'll see that it chipped off later in the video. I sanded, I used different combos of sealant and paint, and I even did a top coat of super glue, which usually works, but not on this area of her body. As you can see here, the face cracked really badly when I put the head back on the body. This was even after I trimmed the neck peg down to reduce pressure on the vinyl. To fix this, I went in carefully with Q-tips and acetone and removed a few layers of the paint where it had cracked. I had expected there to be a lot of texture between the exposed vinyl and the leftover paint, but it actually went on really smooth with the new layers of paint. And on to the face-up. This is the first time I'm trying out my Stabilo Carbothello pastel pencils. I'm pretty pleased with them. They went on really pigmented, but also soft. Because the cores are pastel, you can blend them. So if you accidentally touch them, you might blur the edges. I was also surprised at how quickly this face-up was finished. Not having to draw the eyes saved a lot of time. While working, I used reference pictures of Velvet's face to get the shapes of the eyes right, and I am going to give her 3D lashes later, so I'm not going to draw in individual lashes here. I try to give her nice angled eyebrows because she's not really a happy character. I wanted her to look kind of neutral, but also fierce. This was also why I picked Cleo for this doll because I don't want her to have a super obvious smile. Velvet's face is very pale, and being anime, it doesn't have a lot of definition. You don't see very much shading in her character, so I'm trying to imply just a little bit of shape here and there. Her makeup is very minimal. Using my Tortillion, I blend out the pencils and I use my Jane Tavenport pastels to lightly blush her nose, lips, and cheeks. I have a habit of blushing too much, so I'm trying really hard not to overdo it on this doll. I'm happy with how easily these pencils lifted. It was very easy to erase. I also dipped my Tortillion into my pastel palette and used it to directly apply the pastels to the face with more control. I didn't have any eye putty on hand, so I used some blue Tiki Tacky like you use to hang posters to hold her eyes in place instead. It was really hard to get her eyes to face the right direction and have them stay there. I didn't want to put too much pressure on the head as it was still really flexible at this point and I was worried that I might crack the new face up. I filled the inside of the head and behind the eyes with hot glue to make sure they never move from their place. This helped stiffen the head so that for some reason if my son did squeeze her, it hopefully wouldn't flex and crack. He's already had her for about a week now, and so far she's held up pretty well. 
I super glue her head cap back on and now we're onto the wig. I had originally planned on rerouting this doll, but given that there is no way for me to fill her head with glue and that she has inset eyes, I had to settle on a wig. I cover the head in cling wrap. Using hot glue, I make wefts and glue the synthetic hair to the head. I start at the bottom and work my way up to the part. By this point, I've built up enough hot glue that it creates a kind of glue wig cap that has merged to the plastic wrap. Once I get to the part, I slice the middle open with my craft knife. I insert a few wefts into the opening and glue them onto the inside of the wig. This hides the glue and makes the part look a lot neater. After I'm done gluing all the wefts, I put the wig on the doll and cover it with cling wrap. Then I blast it with hot air from my hair dryer. Be careful not to hold the hair dryer too close to the head because it can melt the hair. With the hair lying flat, I can start styling it. When Velvet is wearing her villager outfit, her hair has a typical anime antenna. I make a teeny tiny weft for this. Since I don't want to add any more glue at this point, I decided just to sew it into the wig instead. find the correct position and start sewing the weft into place. When I was sewing in the weft, it split a bit, so I took some Elmer's glue all, which dries mostly transparent, and I dab it onto my finger and stroke it over the hair. I wrap the antenna around my finger to help it dry in the curve that I want. I continue to use Elmer's glue all while styling as a kind of doll hair gel. It stays in place pretty well as long as you don't get it wet. I section off pieces and cut up on a diagonal to make the bangs pointed. After the glue partially dries, I refine the hair with my scissors until everything is in the shape that I want. For her outfit, I use a Requiem Arts Monster High boy jacket. You'll find a link for that in the description box below. Instead of keeping the long sleeves, I modify the pattern so that the sleeves fall about elbow length. Velvet's tunic reaches about to her mid-thigh, and I use a mannequin doll to measure the length of the shirt. This pattern has a front piece and a back piece. Instead of cutting the back on the fold, I cut two pieces so that it has a closure in the back instead. For the front, I don't hem the pieces, but I sew them together at the seam to match her outfit design.
I start by sewing the middle seam of the front of the shirt. Then I sew the back pieces to the front at the shoulders. Off screen I sew the sleeves on and hem the bottom. Now I add her black undershirt. I faked this because having an actual second shirt underneath would have made everything really bulky. So I just glue a small piece of black fabric onto the inside of the shirt. For the cuffs and the collar, I didn't have the right color of fabric. To work around this, I cut the pieces out from plain white cotton and then I used my watercolor paints to dye the fabric. It's good to keep in mind that the paint dries lighter than it looks when wet. I top stitch the collar on and sew the cuffs onto the sleeves. To make her shoes, I trace the outline of her feet and add about a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm using faux leather and it can be bulky, but it also tears really easily so I didn't want to put the boots under a lot of pressure. I sew up the back of the boot and halfway around the front. Then I turn them right side out. Then I fold the cuff down and stitch it in place in the back. I use super glue and stick the sides of the cuffs down. I take sewing thread and embroider, to the best of my ability, some fake laces onto the front of the boot. I'm not sure why the footage here is all washed out, I'm sorry. I use air dry clay and press it into the bottom of the boot. I keep a detached leg inside of the boot while doing this uh, so the sole takes the correct shape. Once it's partially dry, I add the heel. I use a sculpting tool to merge the two pieces of clay. While the boots are drying, I start on making the other accessories. She has two bags that hang from a belt at her waist. I take a small piece of foam so that the bag retains its shape while I glue the edges down. I use super glue again here. I was originally planning on making the bags functional and it is completely possible with the current design, but I imagine my son getting really frustrated uh, opening and closing them and then them not being able to stay closed or maybe tearing them. So instead I sew the top flap in place and give it a fake buckle. The little green bead was meant to be the closure before I changed my mind. With the bags done, I paint the belt and the shoes. Next I need to make her arm shield thingy. I don't really know what this is called, but it is part of her main weapon in the game. I drew the design on craft foam and cut it out. Off screen I heat it and curve it. Then I super glue the band that will hold it onto her arm into place. I use 3D paint to add the raised details of the arm shield. I think this is Tulip brand paint. I'm really bad and heavy handed with 3D paint. I can never get it as thin or delicate as I want to. And I think I should probably do something like Enchantarium does and put the paint into a piping bag like you do for icing to get a smaller tip. Even with the smallest nozzle I could find, it is not enough control for me.
After the paint dries, I give it a base coat in black. Then I do a top coat in metallic silver. I mix a little white into the silver and paint the raised details to bring out the dimension. The center has a red gem, and to make this pop more, I do a white base first. Off camera, I drop in a bit of UV resin onto the red paint and cure it to make the gem. Next, I make her shin guards. These fit inside of her boots. I make a pattern on scrap paper towels and trace the pattern onto craft foam. I make an initial crease down the middle. I like to use a hair straightener to heat the foam instead of fire. I have more control with it and I tend to set craft foam on fire and I get burnt a lot with candles. I'm not really good at keeping it at the right distance from the flame and this just feels safer. Once I've molded them into the right shape, I heat the middle again with my straightener and pinch the foam with my fingers so it retains the sharp edge the shin guards have. Her shin guards have a ribbon tie that goes behind her legs to hold them in place. I take a large needle, I think it's a yarn needle, and thread a ribbon that is the correct color. I turn the ribbon upside down because I don't want the dotted pattern to show. I thread the ribbon through the foam. Off camera, I painted the shin guards and gave them a coat of Mod Podge to help prevent the paint from chipping. I glue a scrap piece of ribbon to the front and complete the design. I wasn't really sure how to make her sword, and after some thought, I decided to give it a try in resin. I take a piece of modeling clay and roll it out to the length of the blade I want to copy. The sword is from a drawing figure that I got as a gift last year. I really, really, really should have coated the clay in something before adding the resin because everything got sticky and oily and gross later. I add a bit of UV resin at a time. Because the clay is not transparent, I was worried that the UV light would not penetrate all the way through and the resin would not fully cure. I work in increments, making sure each layer is cured properly. I was going to do two sides of the blade and then stick them together in the middle, but when I was looking at artwork of her sword, I realized that the edges were really rough and the unfinished side would work well with the design. Off camera, I gave the sword a few baths in Dawn dish soap to remove as much of the oily residue as I could. This is why I will coat my clay with something next time. Even after several baths, the resin was still stained. I am again using proper protective gear here. I have goggles on and a full respirator mask. I am aware of how dangerous breathing dust particles from sanding can be. Once I finish sanding her sword, I give it a base coat of black paint, just like I did her arm thingy. Then I paint it silver. After that has dried, I do a coat of Mod Podge to help protect it. And then once the Mod Podge is dry, I do a final coat of DuraClear High Gloss Varnish. With all of her accessories complete, it's time to put her together. Overall, I'm pretty happy with her. I tackled several new techniques with this doll and I learned a lot. 
Best of all, my son loves her. It's not quite his birthday yet, but he's been watching me make her for a few months, and he was really happy to finally be able to play with her. I expect eventually she'll get damaged, but even factory dolls won't hold up to a kid playing with them forever. So far, she's in one piece, though. This is the first time I've done any kind of post-processing on the end photos. I had fun adding in the background and hitting at some of the events from the game. If you know the game, you probably know what events I'm talking about as they are very early on. If you've played any games from the Tales series, which one is your favorite? Thank you for watching, like this video if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you want to see more. Bye.